Good morning, this is the 11th of March. Um, is that the Ides of March? Maybe that's the 15th. Anyway, um, this is uh, Vaughan Smith in Nova Scotia. I'm going to unpack a cone 6 glaze firing um, with my recycled clay. And that's always a bit nervous because I'm never sure exactly what's going to happen with recycled clay. What happens? Okay, so I've got... I think the recycled clay is bloating a little bit, which is not too bad. There's one or two little speckles. It always comes out more speckled, the recycled clay, um, but that's pretty good. It's a nice big blue planter. Somebody's ordered this one. They want it for spider plant with no hole in the bottom. Uh, that's the bright blue, um, which is in that uh, mastering cone six glazes. Yeah, it did actually. There's a few pieces on the bottom there. Um, so this is... You've seen these before. This is my tiger stripe, which is the oatmeal, yellow oatmeal over um, my uh, gray. I think it's mouse brown in the mastering context glazes. I've got several of these, so I can skip through these. They, it's very predictable now. This is fire to cone uh, six, but it's a bit under by about seven degrees. Uh, 22, 25 instead of 22, 32 at 108 degrees an hour up from 2000. So, uh, so I've managed to get this so it's very predictable. You get the stripe and it doesn't quite reach the bottom. Uh, same again. See, it's very predictable. And another one. I've made a set of six of those. This is the, the and it did it again. I'm having problems with the um, turquoise matte glaze. It's making my pieces dunt. See the crack all the way across? Um, so I wonder if all of them are gonna do that. Yep, and another one again. So it's the same again. Turquoise, and it's a beautiful glaze, but it's making, I think it's the B-Mix. So I don't think it will do this on the other cone six clay that I use, um, but it's dunting the B-Mix. Same B-Mix clay, but with my turquoise and my yellow oatmeal over the top, and it's not doing it to that. So it is the glaze. And you can always tell if you're gonna worry about dunting in the future, Give them a tap. If it's likely that the clay body is not fitting the glaze, the, the piece could crack right then. Um, so, um, so I'm sure it's that Val's turquoise. I don't think it's the Val's turquoise. I think it's called turquoise matte. I got the recipe off the internet. Um, and now I know for sure that that one, I'm going to test it on my white stone where to see if it cracks on there. But I know it's the B, because these are B-mix. You can see from the clay. It's not as white. B-Mix is cream rather than white. And the white stone where I have is actually uh, pretty white. And I'm not sure if you can tell here because it'll look white on the camera, I'm sure. But that's actually got a creamy color to it. Another one. And this one didn't crack. Hmm. So it's the same glaze, it's that uh, turquoise matte, but it didn't crack. Let's give it a test. It could crack right now. Nope, this one's good. So there's the dilemma whenever you're doing pottery. Hmm. Now I'm fluting these, so it could be that the fluting um, thins the clay a little bit too much, and so the glaze fit over a very thin area of clay might cause the cracking. So then I've got to do a test with a thicker piece with that glaze on it. But I love that turquoise. Advance a kiln shells. Okay, so here we go. This is the other planter I made for that lady to choose from. Um, so she's got two. She's going to put spider plants in these. I'm sure if she wants to put a plastic pot in here. And, there, and there's holes here for it to hang up. So that looks pretty good. Now, here's that tankard I'm making for um, the uh, brewery. It's called the Hans House. So these are prototypes still. 
I've actually made a small sort of sprigging stamp because I'm going to try making a little circle on the front of these and stamping it um, and do a different way of saying Gahan's house because it says it on the bottom there which is kind of nice but I think it might actually and they're the colors of the actual brewery yellow red and black Uh, well, this is a speckle clay, I think, on these. So, um, and that's uh, well, those little tankards. Uh, these are for an order. Um, several people ordered these off the last firing. Um, so, um, these are the green ones. I'll take some pictures of these and uh, put them at the end of the video. Um, and some of them, as I said, about three of these are actually on order. I'm just knocking the stilts off. For anybody watching this for the first time, I fire on stilts. This one's an order too. Somebody wanted black to gray. Um, so look at that. Whoa, it's my tiger stripe in the different glaze. Um, this is my regular oatmeal over the mouse brown, mouse gray with black dipped on the bottom. But yeah, if you fire on stilts, you can just knock them right off. And um, let's see what these sound like. There you go. What they're going to in a pub? They're going to go like that. <laughs> Here's the blue. Oh, and this is gorgeous. Really pretty colors in there. Yeah, so these gray ones were somebody, there's one spare of these if somebody else likes it, but um, isn't that pretty? It's like the beer's frothing right over the top of the mug. These are 16 ounce with a little centimeter at the top, so you'll get a head on your beer without it frothing over the top. I'm sending some of these to Australia, so... Um, um, Hi, Katie in Australia. Hi. And there's my little tea balls here. This is interesting because I have got better color response with these in the past, but I just thinned my yellow oatmeals down a bit um, because they were starting to flake off. They were getting quite thick, but when they were just in between, they were beautiful. There was a really creamy yellow at the top. So I may have thinned these down a bit too much, but they, they're working without flaking now, so. But um, another blue tankard. I've been making a lot of mugs and beer tankards um, because as potters, as you all know, that's what we sell. Um, I would say every other sale is a coffee mug. So um, this is what we got. But I just went through, and I'm doing a video of throwing large urns, cookie jars and urns. So I'll show those. Let's get this one out. Wow, not a coffee mug. Ta-da! <laughs> it's a cookie jar in the mouse brown, mouse gray, with my yellow oatmeal over the top. And the runs didn't work. This is fluted, but the runs didn't show up as well. There's one that did, but I was hoping to get more of those kind of even runs on this. Um, but it worked fine. Let's see. I can frighten everybody. And um, when you do wax resist, live TV here, the lid is stuck at the moment, so you've got to get it off. So I use a rubber, uh, covered something heavy, but rubber, and just hit it, and it will come right off. Uh, but this always scares people when you start hitting pots that are fresh out of the kiln. But I use wax resist on the lid to actually fire it on the piece, because cookie jars, I think, should be fairly airtight, so your cookies don't go off, you know, all soggy and stale. But that's a pretty cookie jar.
All right, so, and uh, so like I said, I've been making a lot of these urns. If I get another cookie jar. This is my creamy oatmeal. And I'm gonna do some, a whole video on developing oatmeal glazes coming up. Um, my glaze chemicals are all in my shed with my recipe book and everything. When it snows, you can't get in there. But, um, but that's a pretty cookie jar too. And that's my regular green, it's called apple green. Um, but it's actually on a slow cool cycle, so you get a lot of kind of crystals breaking out in the glaze too. And it's actually coming out a bit transparent over that oatmeal. Um, but let's see what happens again. You can see the lid. It's pretty. So we'll see what happens. There you go. Comes right off. Now this is the red number 80 clay from Laguna Clay Company. And it really goes toasty brown, dark brown in the gas kiln under reduction. But in the earthen, uh, sorry, in the cone six, it stays that sort of coffee color. But now, the, and with my lids, when I'm doing these, I, I did a, uh, I think I did a video on making these cookie jars anyway, but I'll have a look. I always make the lid curve over the top. So this fits inside there. And I feel like you can get a better seal on those. I fired it on there, so it should be a perfect seal and all that. So, so no soggy cookies. Now this firing cycle was not with an hour soak. Uh, and this is my tomato red, just done with a 15 minute, I think it was 11 or 15 minute soak at 2235, no, 2232 cone six at 108 degrees going up uh, for the last uh, two hours, just about. But that's, that's what the tomato red looks like if you don't do the hour soak at temperature. Uh, so it's still very pretty. I mean, with the other glazes over the top, it's a very pretty jar, but it loses its redness without that long soak because you need that at 22.32 for an hour and also at 17.50 an hour to get it to go red. That's a nice jar. Uh, oh, look, the red's on the inside. And that always happens. We wonder why that is. There's my little secret square underneath too. There you go. That's an, uh, if you can provide something that's a surprise, I think people like that. There you go. And I wipe the bottom of these as well. Okay, the dark red clay, again, with my blue over the top. I have two blues there, bright blue, which tends to go a bit greenish, my dark blue, and then my oatmeal. There you go. I have to sand the bottom of these. I've got some bat wash sticking on the bottom. So, so far we got 100% success rate. Yeah, and it looks like this one's good. Sometimes when you do this, if you're not really careful and you've left a little bit of glaze on the rim, you'll end up with a chip on your rim. So you've got to make sure you wipe these off thoroughly. And then it's more tankards and a couple, oh, no, one, two ball. There you go. This is a beautiful turquoise glaze. This is blue, green, copper, red, you'll find on the internet too. So it's a beautiful turquoise. And there we go, more of the, uh, this was sea foam. I've got the turquoise there and I also have the sea foam glaze that gives you that turquoise. Um, and there's the blue. There's the stilts for people who know. Some people fire on little pieces of clay. They stick to the bottom of the pots. Um, 
and then you have to grind off the bit of clay and that's they still have to grind off the sharp bit but I can use emery a little bit of sandpaper to knock the sharpness off on most of these but um, there you go so you can see the difference this one had the blue over the top this one had the oatmeal over the top and this one had oatmeal plus blue I think yeah there's a little bit of the oatmeal And if you do your stilts with a glaze that's, I have a tint, tin in this, so it's a very tr sort of opaque glaze. And you can tell it's tin because there's some pink coming in there, and that's because the other glaze has a bit of chrome in it. So um, chrome in the firing where you've got tin glazes will turn your tin glaze pink. And all that nice beer tankards. All right, that's the first kill. I have a second kiln I will be firing, actually it's just fired, so that's cooling down now. And I changed the firing cycle in that one to 2205. That is only barely above cone 5. Um, I wanted to see what this blue, this is my recycled glaze, uh, sorry, recycled clay, and it can speckle and bloat and bubble a little bit, which it did a couple of times. Um, in here, but not too bad, um, and it's on the inside anyway, as a planter. So, so basically, um, I'm going to see whether I get rid of that bloating if I go down a cone, because I've got a lot of pots going to go through the kiln in the next week, all with this clay, and I want to make sure I've got it so it's just right. Um, okay, all right. So let's show you. Um, so my recycled clay, I, my wife uses a little bit of earthenware clay and it gets mixed up into my slops. And, um, and it, uh, so when I fire the stoneware clays, you get a little bit of that earthenware clay in here so it can bloat. Uh, and this one, no bloating. So just that, really it's only like 25 degrees difference in firing temperature. But the bloating disappeared. This is a planter with uh, which is on order. So, so the rest of the recycled clay that I've got a lot of it going through uh, will be all fired to 2205 with a 15 minute soak. Um, this is another one of those with recycled clay. And you see, it comes out as a sort of buff, very similar to the 455 speckle. But I've got porcelain, not porcelain, I've got B mix in here, which is a very porcelainous type body. Uh, and then I have my other white stoneware, and then so I have some red stoneware too, which is number 80. Um, so, but it, you know, no bloating. So this is the success story. I had a lot of pieces to fire, so I wanted to make sure before I fire all of them. Uh, and this is a refire. Oh, wow. Okay, this one was a refire using the yellow. Do I have another one of those? I took one of these out earlier on in the video, and this one came out much nicer as a refire. Wow, it ran almost to the foot. So, um, yeah, we got lucky with this one. But um, that's a very nice piece. Yeah, You can't quite see it probably, but there's some real, real of uh, that yellow. Um, there's a real element of yellow in the turquoise there, which was lacking in the other pieces. And I dipped it in the yellows again to refire it. Um, so I have a lot of jars in here, whether I um, we'll get these to fit, who knows, because I didn't wipe off the glazes much on these. Oh, that one's tough, it still came off. Um, and there's that uh, green that I had a piece break at, uh, in the other kiln. This is, it's just called um, matte turquoise. And even though it's is lowered down a little bit, it's still melting. So, um, so this uh, this is on recycled clay too. Um, should show you closer up. So, um, so let's get this out. And I use one of my old shelves here. This is one of the old corderite type shelves. Now, I've still got a bunch of these, so if I need them, I can fire with them. Recycled clay. No bloating. This is looking good for the rest of the... I got some major pieces with this clay I just made, so do the lids fit? Yes, they do. Garlic pot, obviously. And the blue is looking really strong in there. And now, 
first one of these lids, so the jaws are obviously underneath. I need to knock that off. Oh, that's the, that's with my kiln props, back washing the props again. It's fun unloading a kiln. One in the morning, one in the evening. It's a great day. I I probably. I don't know, I, I'm pretty prolific, I guess, but I fire a lot of pots and stockpile them. It's like having an insurance policy for if I ever got sick or broke my arm or something. And then I've got lots of pots, I don't have to worry. I'll show you the jars when I take them out and I can match them up. Here you go, here is the tomato red again. Without that hour soak, it's still brown. You need that hour soak at 2232. So um, the tops have other glazes on them, so they won't be quite as boring as the brown is. Um, this is my, uh, br this is that gray, mouse gray, a little bit of my yellow oatmeal on top of there as well. So that's cr that goes that sort of semi matte a little bit when you do a slow cool. It's much nicer. Lift this out. It's reading 140 degrees, so that's hot to lift up. Oh, there you go. Kiln props still sticking underneath there. But I pull them off easily with my hand, so... Okay, let's look at the brown since it, the brown... Yes, the brown is nice. So, we've got quite a lot of... I've got flies in the studio. It must be spring. Okay, so the brown is nice with the oatmeals over the top there. Not the red, but it's still nice with the different oatmeals up there. So do we have a lid for that one? Yes, we do. And then, I've shown you this before. This is how I fire my lids and they stay round. I have a kiln prop under there. They are a bit hot, 140, maybe a bit warm to unload. Uh, but anyway, and then you take a kiln prop or sometimes you can just tap it and it'll come right out. Then you have to take a little bit of emery paper or sandpaper and just knock off any sharp stilt marks. But you can see this is all recycled clay. I'm thinking I'm going to buy another pug mill because my pug mill is a Venco and it still works really well, but it doesn't do air anymore. In fact, it probably could because I still have the vacuum pump where I never attach it. But I might treat myself to a new pug mill this year. So if anybody local wants to buy a pug mill, let me know. Oh, where's the... Make sure these fit. They do. They're like big butter dishes, cheese dishes. I'm not sure if I showed these in a video or not. But, um... There's some nice colors in, even though it's not doing the red. You got some nice breaking there. I could probably glaze further down. It's just my oatmeals that I put over the top, and sometimes I'll do variegated blue too, if I want to make the brown a little more interesting. If it's red, I don't do it because I love the red. But when it's just gonna, I know it. I knew these were gonna stay brown because I'm not doing the soak. And there you go, fits again. So a little butter dish or a cheese dish, probably butter. Now, oh, these cracked in the other kiln, so did they crack in here? Only one survived in the other kiln, because I love this color, but it's having dunting issues, and this is B mix 5. This firing was to cone 5, so I think if you take it to 6, the B mix with this glaze on it doesn't survive. Um, and you can actually see my yellow in there too, that's my yellow oatmeal that stayed yellow over inside of it, which is very nice with it. It broke really nice on the outside over the turquoise. This is, uh, it's either seafoam. It's beautiful feeling. The texture with the semi matte is very nice. So that's another really nice tea ball in here. What about this one? And this one isn't cracking either. So, um, so I think the B mix doesn't like to go to cone six with this glaze. It does fine with the brown glaze at cone eight. I've taken B mix up there. Um, but we've had too many pieces crack 
so I know this glaze maybe from now on I'll just do cone 5 and it is beautiful look at the colors in there really pretty color V-Mix is my favorite clay and it's absolutely beautiful so this is a really pretty lid too look at that really pretty take the stilts off so which one does this match my guess is it's this one so it's another garlic pot that's very pretty as well so cone five and that turquoise is beautiful it just feels silky you know it's so um, anyway remember if anybody likes anything in this video you can either do a screenshot if you know how to do those or you can do a timestamp of the video and um, and basically uh, send me an email. Email address is at the end of the video. This is spectacular. Look at that. Greens, there's some bronzy, coppery looking colors in there. It's almost, you know, that sort of oxidized copper kind of greenish look a bit. But you've got some olive in there. And that's my yellow oatmeal, one of them I have. Uh, three different oatmeals. I'm going to do a video on oatmeals eventually. It's just have to wait till it warms up because I mix my glazes outside. You'll see, I have an earlier video showing me my shed outside and in the winter it's cold in there. Yeah, garlic pots I don't usually make until the fall, but I did them early because I'm just totally out of them. Variegated blue in the Mastering Cone 6 glazes runs a lot, but at Cone 5 it doesn't. So this is a glaze which looks just as good at cone five, um, but basically it's more stable as far as running. And you got, I dip my dot blue over the top a little bit, and that's really pretty as well. And we've got a lid for that one. There we go. Oh, this was the fake ash. I have a fake ash glaze, uh, which I'm just going to try in the, in the gas kiln in the summer, but um, but it looks nice. And I did my, uh, I think I may have done the turquoise on the top. Oh, nope, that's my uh, regular green. That's my apple green, I call. But the fake ash really looks good with it. That was a recipe. If you just type in fake ash on the, you'll find that now. Which one is this? I think, is that it? I don't think that's the lid for it. Maybe this was it. No, that's the same as that. I'll hang on a bit for that one. I'm still looking at that brown one. It's really nice. That's only 13 minutes. I shouldn't hold you up too much longer. This is my, the glaze I love as well. Uh, and it's not as nice over this clay body, but it's still really good. Look how that matte, crystally look with my oatmeal melting in too. I've said before, if you um, want to jump the gun, uh, oatmeals are easy to make, uh, but you just have to get some titanium dioxide or tin oxide and put them into a semi-matte uh, white glaze and you'll get an oatmeal and this is that brown again G generally speaking you can take a gloss glaze that's maybe for cone 8 and fire it to cone 6 um, with your opacifiers in there and that will become a semi matte glaze too so um, so it's not hard to make an oatmeal and I got a lid for that one too I have a video coming up which is real. I think will be really good. It's not for beginners because it's really tall pieces, but it's all lidded pieces. So this was my uh, test for the lidded pieces because I've got the tall ones going through the kiln um, over the weekend. Um, can I pull that out? Yep, that one pulled out very easy. So it's you know there's that grey with my oatmeal over the top. And there's a, my two oatmeals, the yellow ones up on the top, and then the kind of creamy yellow oatmeal is underneath it. 
and then the gray. I don't have the plates for these in this firing by the look of it. And there's another one of these. Ah, oh, that's the lid for this one. So there's your nice little garlic pot again. Oh, it changed a lot there. I must have dipped maybe my blue over it there. Yeah, it got this little striping happening a bit there too. The tiger stripe. Actually, I do have the plate. There you go. This is the little butter dish. There's the plate again. I'd already unloaded it. That's a really nice butter dish. Got some striping happening. Can I get this out? I might need my pliers for this one. Nope, came out. Usually, if you just tap them, they come out. So we're starting to get some of the striping going down. Not a lot, but it's starting to happen in that piece. This one more so, and it's almost running off the actual edge there. You can just see there's a little bulging down a little bit, but it's much more striping because I dipped this one a lot further in to the oatmeals. Don't go away. Here you go. Uh, what did I do on this one? This looks like it's my variegated blue with the blue and the oatmeal over it. Yes, I do. Well, let's see, we've got a couple more jade and let's see if I can tap them. You know, this is great. I figured out my, this, this is a beautiful glaze. I'd like to continue using it, uh, but I've got to keep it at cone five, unless I change the clay body, because this is B-mix. But none of these are cracked, you know, whereas in the other kiln this morning, you saw two come out cracked. So, um, got the yellow in that one. This one, same again, cone five. So play around with your firing temperatures if you think something's not working. Obviously you can't drop down so low that the glaze is just under fired. Um, but this uh, means I've got some great test pieces here for the big ones going through. Should be mid on this one. hoping that we have a season this year because I've got so many pots um, because of what's uh, happened with COVID Nova Scotia is now up to 70,000 uh, vaccinated people out of a population of 1 million we only have a million people in the province so 70,000 are now vaccinated they think they can do another 30,000 this week I think so then it'll be one out of ten people has got a vaccine here. So we've got a long way to go before we can feel like they will open up the province. Whoa, that's nice. Oh, I need a pair of pliers here. I usually have a pair of pliers handy to pull out the silks. But if you tap them really hard, they come out. So look at that. Variegated blue with my dark blue and the oatmeal probably over the top. Got like letter M's in there. Nope, I don't have a base for it yet. There you go. Yeah, so that came out really nice too. Almost ran off the bottom here too. All right, well, that's the end of that 
So you've got two kiln loads there. Um, hope I'm not overloading you a little bit, but uh, mastering cone six glazes, you'll get most of these recipes, but if you type on the internet, the other ones I've mentioned, you'll find those as well. Uh, and um, there's a good hint about firing temperature. Cone six, which is what they're all supposed to go to, go to cone five and you still can do pretty much good, pretty fine. I mean, it's like, it hasn't changed these at all, really. Um, and um, uh, and you've stopped the running. Uh, and also this clay body doesn't bloat now, which is great. All right, this is Vaughan Smith signing off in Nova Scotia. Um, so stay safe and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.